what is going on everyone my name is adam mallard this channel is called pragmatic ways and you are watching my refactory to cleaner code series where we go through different coding samples and i provide some real practical advice in terms of refactoring the code making the code cleaner and easier to read and just overall better and cheaper to maintain in fact, many of the coding examples that we go through in these videos here really come from these two books right here. Now, this first one is the Clean Code book by Robert Martin, and then immediately followed by the Refactoring book by Martin Fowler. And if you were a software developer and you don't have either of these two books yet, I highly recommend you check the description for the links down below and pick yourself up a copy of these books. But without any further ado, let's get into today's video. So today's refactoring video should be a pretty quick one. Now, I saw this code sample in some Facebook group, and I just saw it as a great opportunity to apply some quick refactoring tools. So the program requirements are as follows. All right, we'll say that a number is special if it is a multiple of 11 or if it is one more than a multiple of 11. All right, so if the number is 11, then it's special. And if it's or, if it's one more than a multiple of 11, then it is also special. All right, so the task is to write a method that accepts a number, and then it, that method is going to print true if the given number is special. All right, so here's a couple different test cases that they provided us to ensure that our program works as ordered. All right, so if we, they apparently want the function name to be special 11, and then uh, passing in 22 to that, that should return true because 22 is in fact a multiple of 11. Passing in the integer 23 to that function, well, that will also output true because 23 is one more than 22, and 22, again, is a multiple of 11. But then if you pass in 24 to this function, well, that should return false because 24 is not a multiple of 11, nor is it one more than a multiple of 11. All right, so this person's, uh, right here, we're showing this person's uh, submission. This is what they entered in as their homework. And this works, all right, if we, I, I just ran this just now, I ran this inside my IntelliJ, and this outputs true, true, and false for, again, these three given test cases. So this, this program works, but it's not exactly clean, all right, it's not the best way to do this. So we're just going to apply some real quick refactoring. And one of the main things that we're really going to do is called the decompose conditional refactoring, which is really just a subset of the more common extract function uh, refactoring. And basically what that means is we're just going to be taking this uh, pretty com I mean, not too complex, but just not so easy to read off the surface um, conditional logic. And we're going to extract this logic out into its own function and then give this function a very specific name that helps really, that really helps us understand what this is supposed to be doing a lot easier. So let's see what that actually looks like here. And because most modern IDEs have very, very useful refactoring tools, I'm going to be using that. Inside IntelliJ, I'm just going to highlight this code here, and I'm going to go up to Refactor, and I'm going to go to Extract, and then I'm going to go to Method. All right, and all this is going to do is it's going to provide a window that says, you know, what type of method do you want to create? What type of method do you want to create to do this extraction here? And I'm going to rename this method here. I'm going to name it is special. And then I'm just going to click on Refactor. So now, right off the bat, this whole function becomes significantly easier to read. Special 11, if is special, print true, else print false. Now, we'll get into refactoring this in a moment, but I still want to focus on this here, and I'm still not too entirely too happy with how this is, um, because I'm basically saying, you know, if true, print true else if false, print false. And you know, that's still kind of just like duplicate logic there. So really all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do system.out.println and then I'm just gonna print out is special instead. And then I can just delete all that logic. And now this function works the exact same. I'm just gonna go ahead and command s that or control save and then uh, control r to run that. And just make sure that this output does still come out the way it's supposed to come out. And it does. We still get true, true, and false. Okay. So now this function's a heck of a lot cleaner. Let's jump down to this bad boy down here. 
All right, so like I said, now that I have this you know, conditional logic extracted out into a function, and this function is named is special, it is a lot easier to know what this is doing right off the bat. You know, maybe if I want, if I suspect that this is wrong, I could take a couple seconds to like actually try and read this, but if I'm just trying to glance over this code, I can clearly see what this function is supposed to be doing because the, the function name is just is special. You know, is this number special or not? It will, return, it will return true or false. But like I said, um, this conditional as it stands just isn't, or this expression now rather, not even really a conditional now, it's just a, a straight expression. It's not really as clean as it should be. So let's go ahead and try and clean that up, right? One of the first things we see is that there is actually a duplicate logic in here, and we are always big fans of the dry principle, which stands for don't repeat yourself. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cr uh, create just an integer, all right? And I'm going to name this integer a uh, special number, and then set that to equal to 11. And then I will replace these magic numbers in here with my new variable. And I will save that. And now I can uh, press control run again. You know, it's always important that you make micro changes and recompile your code and test your code in between all these little micro changes. Because in the event that something was wrong, it's a lot easier to undo one or two changes than it is to undo like 20 or 30 changes to try and figure out where the breakage happened. All right, but anyways, we see that this still comes out as true, true, false. So we're still on track here. All right, and now I want to extract out each of these different um, uh, expressions here. Uh, you know, this is one big expression, really composed of two different parts here because of the OR operator. So I'm going to extract out each of these into their own little Boolean expression here. So I'm going to say Boolean is multiple of, and that's just going to equal you know, this one here, I'm going to replace that and then throw that in there. Now it says return is multiple of or that ugly thing. So now let's redo, uh, redo that ugly thing. And I'm going to say Boolean uh, is one more than multiple of, you know, a long function name, but, um, you know, again, clarity is king when we're coming to programming, so I'm kind of fine with it. Control C that, Control V that, and then Control C that, and replace that. And put my semicolon in there. And now Control Save. And I'm going to run this now, and as it's running, explain it. So now it's a lot easier to read, because now this function is special. I can really just look at this return statement, and I, I can see immediately it's going to say return is multiple of, or return is one more than multiple of. And then again, uh, our output still comes up the same. And now the last thing I really want to do is really focus on this. Again, this came from the submission from this user. Um, I'm not entirely too too much of a fan of, of how they calculated this logic. It works, but it's not exactly clean, all right? Because again, what we're trying to do is print or print or return true if it is one more than a multiple of 11. So what they did is, is they subtracted one from the number first and then did the module on the special number. And I kind of just think that's a little bit confusing because if it's one more than a multiple of 11, well then the remainder just needs to be one instead of zero. So I'm going to switch up this logic here instead, and I'm going to say um, if number modulo special is equal to 1, and then control save that, and then control run that, and make sure that that logic does still come out the same way, which it should. I should still receive true, true, false once it's all said and done, and I do. And now that I have the logic uh, a little bit easier to read, we should notice that, again, we have some duplicate logic here and that I'm, refact I'm uh, recalculating the remainder twice. So let's go ahead and extract that into its own function or uh, variable as well. So I'll just say int remainder, if I know how to spell, remainder, no, that's right, okay, equals, uh, remainder equals uh, number modulo special number. And now I could just say, uh, you know, replace this calculation in here with my new integer. And that's all I need to do. And I'll control save that, and one last time, control run that. And everything should work out the exact same way still. And there we go. So I think that's just about it. I think that's as clean as we can make it for now. Um, you know, maybe, I guess this actually probably should be final constant. 
special number. Just make it a little bit more clear. And, you know, also it makes it a lot easier if we ever need to change 11. That's why, you know, the program requirements, I wasn't too happy with what they said here. They want us to make 11 in the function name because for whatever reason, maybe this, maybe the special number changes and maybe special number needs to be 12 or 13 and we have to go and change this as well as all the instances here. So I wasn't too happy with the program requirements there, but, you know, I, you can't do anything about requirements, right? So, um, anyways, I digress. Um... Yeah, I think this is about as clean as it can get here. You know, we have this function here that now meets the requirements. It is a function named special 11 that accepts a number and it prints true if the number is special or not, and then prints false if it's not special. And then we delegate that logic to a specific function named is special and it returns a Boolean. And all it does is it checks for the remainder of a number. If that remainder is zero, meaning that the number is, uh, the special number, it is divisible by the special number. Or the remainder is one, meaning that it is one more than a multiple of the special number, then it's going to return true right down there. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for this refactoring video. I really hope you gained something useful out of this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you are a fan of this video and other ref videos like this and you want to learn more about refactoring and clean coding tips and design patterns and everything else that makes software engineers just great software engineers, uh, please subscribe to this video and head over to the blog over at pragmaticways.com. Uh, if you want to join our Facebook group, we have a free Facebook group. It is called the Software Engineering Mastermind Group. A link to all of that will be down in the description below. And until next time, happy coding, everyone.